so today is April 14th. We're going to start in a little bit. My name is Elia Aviles, and I get to talk about some fun activities that we can do with our children at home during the break. Um, some of the things we can find at home, um, I, I know it's, it's a little bit difficult right now to get materials, but I'm sure we can recycle and still have fun with our kids at home. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I'm in my room right now and waiting for more people to get on. I have my pool noodle right here that I borrowed from my grandniece um, to kind of explain. I don't have a lot of visuals. I wish I did, but um, I can maybe post some things I can do with, with her and post some pics too later on um, for all of us to see. So. Um, the activities we're going to talk about today are, are still learning activities because one of the important things, um, even for me at school, is to remember that anything that we do with our children is an opportunity for learning. Um, a lot of the activities, however, that I will be sharing that I s selected from an abundance of activities um, are more fun oriented um, and not completely targeted to specific concepts that you are teaching. Um, it's not specific to math, not specific to language, but you can integrate those concepts into these activities that um, we'll be talking about today. So um, I guess I'll begin now. Um, so maybe right now it's safe to say that we have pool noodles at home. Um, if you don't, then there are other ways to replicate the, the same um, activities here. So the idea, some things to do. The idea to do with your pool noodle, one of them is first for you to cut your pool noodle and um, the it is recommended that we cut the pool noodle um, at a two inch measurement. So you cut these noodles at two inches measurements and then that serves as blocks for your kids. So even in the pool, they can be using the blocks in the pool. Now, when you take those, and I'm just um, looking at my notes here too, when you have these blocks of the pool noodles, what you want to do is to label each of them with the letters of the alphabet. You can label them with the numbers. You can, you, you can even um, label words that maybe you're working with for your child at the time. And so just the basic idea for, you, for your child to stock the pool noodles um, in high, in um, in alphabetical order or numerical order, and if you're working with words, then you just if it's five words that you're working on for the day, have the child repeat after you, and it's just about building the blocks and working on these um, concepts, right? Now, if you're in the pool. You can play throw to throw with the pool noodles or if you don't have the pool noodles and you have small balls, you can also label those and still engage your child in that 
kind of um, fun activity that you're doing with them. Also, um, with those two inch pieces of the noodles, just with string. Um, if you don't have string, do what I would do. I would, morning, <laughs> I would um, cut an old t-shirt, honestly, and cut them in strips. And those can serve as your string right now, if you don't have string. And it's just stringing the pool noodles again. Um, if you're working, if you've labeled them alphabetically with the letters, then it's stringing those pool noodles in that order or the numbers, right? Um, there are so many other activities to do um, with your pool noodles, and I found one that I thought was really good. Um, and I'll just turn the camera for you to see, and then um, this this site is learningforkids.net it's a really good um, site for finding all sorts of activities for all our children right so i'm just going to turn this around for you to see another activity and you will see that the pool noodles are also cut um, in that two inch size okay so um, this is showing you the picture I'll show you is the same idea as if you were to label the pool noodles but this activity is when you're working on colors as well so you can see already just with a pool noodle how many um, how many different activities you can actually do with just that one material right okay so I'll just turn it around it's small um, I hope you can see it so um, there we have and you see the site is right there as well um what they've done they're using the little colorful balls with your pool noodles and it's each pool noodle is labeled each pool noodle hope you saw it um again the link is learningforkids.net so you see that each pool noodle piece it has a little toothpick and it has the little label, the color labeled on top. And then your child is to put the correct color in the, in the hole of the pool noodle. So that should be a lot of fun. Now, if you have tweezers, that's also recommended um, for some of our children to assist in the gripping of the colorful balls that you're using. If you don't have these balls, I mean, you can just use color paper mash it up in balls right now if you, we can't really go out and buy that right now we have to be a little bit creative um, take colorful paper mash it up in little balls to to use it as in place of the little these balls here I don't I don't remember what they're called um, they're pom-poms right okay so I think that that might be a fun one for you to do. Um, also, and I think this is really good because I can immediately think of some of, of my, um, my students at school whom I miss so much. Um, they love bugs and I can't wait to get back to try it. Um, using the pool noodles in the same way of labeling the noodles that we talked about um, with the letters of the alphabet or the numbers. Um, use the pool noodles to create bugs. And that also is an exercise that you can use to work on vocabulary words um, with your child. I know they will enjoy it when, when we get back, get to do it. I can't wait. I'm excited um, to see them. Um, you can use straws as your string if you have. Um, if you have the colorful straws, that's even good. So they can just insert the color, um, what, whatever color you label on the two inch pieces. Um, you have them put in the color straw in, in the circle of the pool noodle. Okay. So those are a few things that we can do with pool noodles. There's so much more. Um, then I thought that this was an important one for us right now. Um, if you do not have a room 
for you to specifically create a sensory timeout area or sensory area for your child. Um, I thought it, it's, it's a good idea um, for us if we don't have a specific room to do this. And you do have a cardboard box from an appliance or something that's large enough. <laughs> um, you take the edges of the box. It's like you're creating a, a little room. But it will be three walls instead of four. So your child is in this um, space. And above the cardboard, that's where you would then string different color um, ribbons hanging down from the cardboard space that you've created. You can also use a hula hoop if you have one. If you don't have a hula hoop, um, you can use wire or a hanger um, to make that circle shape. And on that circle, that's where you would tie the ribbons and hang that over the cardboard space that you've created in in your living room or in your child's room and that's an area that your child can go to and feel safe but still have activities um, that will help to calm if if that's what that child needs at the time to calm him down in this area right if you have a closet corner i'm thinking if you have an area that you can, like a, a tent even, if you have a tent or an area that you can set your curtains where it really lets your child know that this is your space to go to when you need a time out to calm down. Um, it's good to have music available there. And of course, you know your child, so you know what kind of music to play some kind of calming music or whatever, <laughs> whatever, um, even if it's the beginning of, of a, youth, a show that they enjoy and that's what calms them down, then you want to have that there for your child in that area. So it's really easy, again, it's just taking a cardboard box, you just want the three sides of it. You don't want the box with the four sides. It's not the child going into the box, but it's just creating that corner um, in a space in your house or in the in the child's room, right? Um, let me see. Okay, if you have um, if you have any type of fidget items, and it's not like the it's it's basic things like it could be just and i'm thinking again um of of my kid of my children at school um there are marbles there are bugs some kind of game that they like and interact well with you want to include that in the car in the sensory corner for your child right um now i'm going Okay. Okay. Sorry. Morning. Morning. Okay. Now, um, this third part that we're going to talk about is your visual schedules. And it's at number three, but really the visual schedules are, are so important and helpful tools um, for our children, right? So you... You want to integrate your visual schedules because it helps your child to know what's coming next and to have an idea. So it helps to smooth the transition from one activity to the, activity to the next. Um, and that's where you can use your first and then anything that we've, you've heard some discussions about these things before. So... Um, with your visual schedules, you wanna it you wanna create it's like a calendar, but you wanna have your visual schedules be visual. So you want pictures and and pictures that are relative to the activity that your child is doing for the day, following that visual schedule. It helps to keep your child on track, right? Um, 
So having your picture schedule outlining even the steps of a specific task. So again, back to the pool noodles. If you have your visual schedule and you have your picture of your pool noodles, you want to include a picture of the activity that you will be doing with the pool noodles for your child. And um, a part of that is also having um, of this visual schedule is also explaining the steps of the activity to your child using these pictures, right? Um, for them to be able to follow more, more easily, okay? Right, okay. So, um, you want to go through your visual schedule. I won't spend too much time on this, but you want to go through your visual schedule and just talk about it with your child. You know, what, what comes first? What comes next? Do a talk through of that schedule, um, that daily schedule, and then as you go along in your day, you point it out what you're doing so they already have an idea of what the day has in store but you're going to be using your visual schedule as you go along okay morning hi Aidan I'm so happy to hear from you hope you're doing good uh, okay um, okay so um, that's your visual schedule that's a really um, that's a topic that we can spend a lot of time on um, we can also we can do that another time if it hasn't been done or maybe someone else is going to talk about that some more right okay so while we're doing these activities not all the activities you have to stay inside your house um, you're using the pool noodles you can be in the pool but you also want to get out um, of the house in your yard possibly on your veranda or in a different area um, and you want to get physical so you're going to do some activities um, that are physical activities but while you're doing these physical activities this is where you are able to incorporate your learning concepts that you're working with learning um, that you're working with so um, if you you can use tape I'm sure we I think we all have tape at home I bought a lot <laughs> just in case um, so you use your tape lines on your veranda um, and you're going to play pretend balance so the tape the tape that you put on your on the floor is serving as a beam as a balance beam and you can also number, put numbers on, write numbers with a chalk or tape numbers on the floor along the beam. So while your child is balancing on the pretend beam, you can be counting. Um, you can be going through the whatever letters that you're working on. Again, it doesn't have to be the entire, le um, all the letters of the alphabet and not going into the learning concepts like the academic concepts much but it's just to explain how you can incorporate um, these concepts into your activities even your words um, can you can use while playing pretend balance um, on the beam that is just tape on the ground and that's pretty easy for us to to access for our kids right um, so while you're using your balance beam, you're counting one, two, three, and some children will need a little bit more assistance. You might, you might need to model it, do it with them, count with them. Even if they're not responding, um, some of our children are nonverbal, so that's okay, but they're listening to you, so you still want to, you still want them to hear you saying the letters of the alphabet and the numbers or whatever it is that you're working on um, on developing for with your child right um, so then you want to also 
um, use your jump rope. You're outside, you have a jump rope. You use the jump rope, you're skipping. It's a physical activity, activity but while you're jumping, you want to um, work on your letters and your alphabet or your vocabulary or you want to talk about, you can even use it as a time to remind your child of the schedule that you're working on. It's just, again, very important for us to integrate as much as we can and to be active with our children, talking with our children, being active with them. So um, even if they're not responding, it, we're still working with them. We're still um, offering some stimulation for our kids, right? Um, so here are some other um, physical activities that you can do. You can hop like a frog, and I think you already get the gist, hop like a frog, count your hops, um, say your words, say your colors, um, hop like a frog. You can cut out um, circles of different colors and have your children hop onto a color that you say hop like a frog to yellow, hop like a frog to blue, hop like a frog to red. And that is working on, right there, working on identification of different colors. Um, your numbers again, right? Um, <clears throat> wiggle like a worm. I think of specific children who enjoy um, doing this physical activity. It's, it's so much fun, wiggle like a worm. Um, <clears throat> walk like a crab and again it's just integrating your concepts into these activities okay so um the other activity we're going to share with you now is and you can use it in that area that you make with the cardboard or using a tent the sensory area um, that you've created for your child this next um, activity, well, it's more like you'll be making, it. It's a, it's a sensory and calm down bottle. So you're using bottles, you're using glitters, and you're using water. It's, um, you're making your own um, calm down tool for your child. Um, you wanna use plastic, <laughs> not glass, okay? Um, so you're gonna just take a bottle, you can use hair gel, um, water glitters, and hang it in the area or over the bed, but in the area, in the sensory area, you hang your plastic bottle and it offers um, a source of calming down for our children um, just to look at it. Hey, it's calming for us too, right? So you take the bottle, you fill it with water and glitters. If you have hair gel, you can also mix the hair gel um, with water and cover it, add string, whatever you have to use as string. If you don't have string, like I said, cut strips of an old shirt or something, <laughs> tie, it, tie it, hang it over the, um, the area, the sensory area you've created for your child, okay? And this is just a technique. We know that um, sometimes our children have meltdowns or we know they just need a break. So that's something, that's a good tool for them to have. Um, this is also a good tool for you to have when you're doing other activities um, with your child. Um, maybe at a five minute break, you can have them just take time to go to their sensory area and enjoy that and then they come back. And again, you're using your visual schedule with your child as you go through your day using your um, these activities and doing your learning activities with your child. Okay, let me see. Um, Right, okay, um, in the bottle, I forgot I added this. Um, you can also use paper clips. 
or if you have marbles you put in the marbles no this this is um a calm down a sensory calm down tool but um this because it's paper clips or marbles it also has that sound so it might not work for for all our children you can just have it available um for them and they're if they're gonna go to it if they want it you know um so you put in the paper clips you put in marbles um in the in the bottle again a plastic bottle <laughs> please um for for children and then um right okay and then now um again while going through so many activities i just took these ones out because i thought they would be easier for us to do um the last one that i'm going to share with you that i have set here is um put the noodle down here um is doing our um brain breaks okay so again you want to have your breaks in as much as possible included in your visual schedule for your child um but again sometimes you'll tell you can tell that they need another brain break so uh, um this it's still physical but um i thought for this brain break it would be good to do some yoga or movement activities um, with our children um, there's a lot of there's a website that explains the different breeding exercises that you can use that website is pocketot.com slash shop um, so I can always just um, post these sites later for you to access as well um, so you're just doing deep breathing with music um, if your child responds to music you want to use that and use your yoga mat i have my yoga mat right here i'm not using it as much as i should but you want to take that time out um, with your child to do your deep breathing exercises basic stretches this is a time for you also to if, you, if your child needs um the that therapy they need the pressure you can use it as that time for them to calm down you're you're helping them during this time um this might be a, a good another good <laughs> um talk to have on how to do these activities um, later on um, just um, having them these are just yoga positions that help them out out to giving them pressure having them lay on their back bringing their knees forward to their chest and you're adding pressure on them if that's what they need or just simply calming them down with your hand on their back or on their hand wherever it is that you know that your child needs it um, at that time that's what you want to do but it's a calming brain break especially if you've noticed fluctuations in your in your child's mood for the day then you you might want to do this more than once um, during the day for your child okay um, so <laughs> I'm thinking um, there are so many more activities um, I hope that these activities gave you an idea I'll just do a little um, recap for you we I'll go from the last up right so we spoke about our um, calming exercises um, like the your yoga movements um, massaging this is where the therapy um, comes in hi morning I miss you guys so much too so much um, uh, yeah so you want to do your yoga movements with your child um, 
using some of the therapy techniques that you've learned during this time but remember we're using it as a brain break and that is um, included in your visual schedule right so um, that's the that's the brain break with exercise and movement um, you can add rhythm to it as well the music or song that you know um, your child enjoys you add that in um, during your exercises we have the sensory and calm down bottles that you create if you don't have one because I know that they sell them um, we had one donated by a parent but um, it broke so I'm gonna make one um, when we get back to school yay so you have your sensory calm down bottles remember um, you can just add water and glitter you can add water hair gel and glitter um, if you want to um, add sound to your sensory calm down bottles not not too much you know what um, you will know um, what your child um, will respond to more you can have them both but um, you can put in paper clips marbles colorful stones whatever it is that you have I, I just again emphasize that it's a plastic bottle and not glass <laughs> bottle um, and cover it tight with string if you don't have string I'm always about <laughs> cutting um, old clothes or whatever you have into strips and using that as your string to tie up so you're good to go um, then we have some of our physical activities morning some of our physical activities that we can do the hopping like a frog um, is my favorite you can um, cut out remember cutting out circles um, of different colors this bristle board plot whatever placing it down on the ground in your yard um, saying to your saying to your child hop to yellow hop like a frog to yellow hop like a frog to red um, and basically that's it replace the colors with numbers with letters your words that you're working on but so they're learning and they're getting that physical activity that they need um, for the day okay um, oh yeah and the fun one about just using your um, taped tape lines on your on the floor on the ground whatever and you can play pretend balance um, you can use your tape lines to create an obstacle course like a maze and have them go through it you can sing during that morning um, you can sing during this time as well while you're doing this activity we also talk about the visual schedules it's always going to be mentioned um, our visual schedules um, going through your daily tasks with your child including your brain breaks in your visual schedule um, remembering to go through your visual schedule at the beginning and then going along with it um, throughout the day right um, and then the creating the safe sensory timeout area if you don't have a specific room you just use your cardboard appliance box you just want the three sides so that it creates the corner that they can easily get into you can have a lot of fun with this you can cover it with wrapping paper um, you don't have a hula hoop to put on top to tie around so it acts like a mobile take a hanger shape it like a circle hang your ribbons add in your sensory bottle in there you want to have music there a pillow really set it nice because this is their area their calming down area their chill area for them to have um, in the house on your veranda right um, so that's a good one and then of course the pool noodles so um, and there's so much that we can do with the pool noodles so um, that's it I'm so happy I got to do this with you guys and got to hear from a lot of you I hope it helped 
um, let me know um, if you have more questions or you're thinking about something and you just want to share it, run it by someone. I'm here. I'll um, we'll share my details afterwards. Um, and so now, and if, and if you have any questions right now, I guess you can do that now. Um, but thank you. Just waiting to see if any of you have any questions or, or are we are are we all good? Maybe give me a thumbs up. All good, covered. So today looks like a bleaky day, but um, you can still get out there and get these activities done with our children. The easy one to start maybe if you want to just get one of these activities done with your child or for your child, you can start with the, um, with the sensory bottle and that's an activity that you can do with your child as well and that's a fun activity that they'll enjoy and then it's something that they get to keep, right? Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and do that. I think I'll do mine today too. For, yeah, for myself, okay, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the brain break idea, cool, yeah, okay, all right, so, um, thank you again, guys, oh, you like the sensory bottles? <laughs> Yeah, those, those are good, right? I'm thinking it's good for us too, <laughs> especially at right now. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thanks. Um, that's it for me. Stay safe. Take care. I hope to talk to you soon. Miss you guys a lot. Okay. Sending out a lot of love to all the children out there. Bye.